Hi, this is Joanna from Custom Quilts, and today I'm going to show you how to quilt this really fun motif. Um, so all it is is swirls mixed in with pebbles. And this is a great motif to do on the background of a quilt that has like a lot of negative space. You can do it in the background of a quilt block. You can do it really anywhere you like. Um, the really cool thing about this is um, I really like to quilt these swirls. And sometimes if I'm doing swirls like all over in the background, it gets really boring and tedious to do the same thing over and over and over again. And so sometimes to mix it up, I really like to throw in these little pebbles because it gives it a little more visual interest and um, it gives it a little more texture. And so that's a really cool thing that you can do. And uh, okay, so I'm going to show you how to do some pebbles real quick. And all they are are little circles. And the great thing about these pebbles is you can make them any shape that you want. They don't have to be a perfect circle. They'll blend in if you do them all odd shapes. So like I did kind of a little oval there and that one was a little misshapen circle. Actually, the, the more different they are, the cooler it looks and it looks like a more natural pebble in this fill. Now, if you were doing pebbles in a border that needed to be all the exact same size, then of course you wouldn't want to vary the size because that might look funny. Um, but all we're doing is pebbles and so we're doing like little circles and then coming out and backtracking over a line that we previously quilted. I don't usually backtrack all the way around a pebble. As you can see in these quilting lines, like this line is a little thinner and the other half of it is fatter because I went over that line again. Um, if you use a blending thread, like I'm using a contrasting thread so you can see the quilting better, but if I used a pink thread that blended with this fabric, you wouldn't be able to see the backtracking hardly at all. So just keep that in mind whenever you're picking your thread color. Um, it does give it a really cool look if you use a, a little contrasting thread. It helps it stand out a little bit better. Um, but if you want it to kind of blend with the background and just give some really good texture, then definitely use a blending thread. And, uh, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and quilt some pebbles around this existing swirl that I already have. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go into a swirl. So all I'm doing is I'm quilting a little circle, but I'm going in and then uh, curving the center and then coming right back out. And I'm, I'm not overlapping my swirls. I'm going to come back and connect with this outer line of my previous swirl. Just like that. And so now I've got this little space over here. And so I have a couple of options. I can either come and backtrack up this line on this swirl, this, this one right here, and then come out and echo around this swirl again. But if I do that, that's going to make this swirl noticeably larger than my other swirls, which is okay. The swirls can be different sizes. That's not like a make or break kind of thing. Uh, like you can tell, this swirl's smaller than this one, uh, this one's smaller than this one. So I do have some variations in size on my swirls, so that wouldn't be a big deal. But the great thing about these pebbles is you can use them to fill these awkward areas without having to echo back over. Um, so just think about, so I'm going to do some pebbles here, and that's going to bring me out here. And so I have two choices after that. I can either come into another swirl right here, or I can go and do some pebbles on the outside of this swirl, and then come do another swirl down here. So just kind of think about what your intentions are while you're, while you're doing your pebbles, what direction you want to go, things like that, so that you don't end up in a bind. Okay, so let's go into our pebbles here. I'm going to do a couple more pebbles right here. And I will say the slower you go on these pebbles, the sloppier they're going to look. I'm, I'm quilting one handed right now because I've had to move my other handlebar out of the way. So the camera doesn't have a, an obstruction right here. Um, Usually I'm quilting with two hands. And so that's what I did this previous step with. That's why my pebbles look so much neater. And that's why these are sloppy. I'm going slow and using one hand. So um, 
just for the sake of the video. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go into a swirl here. And whenever I'm quilting my swirl, I'm keeping in mind what my boundaries are. So I've got pebbles all up over here. So whenever I came out of my swirl, I went ahead and made this line reach out and touch the edge of this pebble. So just be thinking about that when you're traveling. I'm gonna do some pebbles here. And I'm gonna go into a swirl. Okay, so right here I've got a space that's too small for a pebble unless I do a really skinny one, which I could do that. I'm just gonna ignore that space and I'm gonna come do a pebble right here. So whenever you have a space that's this small, you can quilt a really skinny pebble in there, like I did it here, I did it here. Um, or you can opt to quilt nothing. And since there are things quilted all around it, the eye isn't going to be drawn to this little ignored space. It's just going to blend in with everything else because there's so much quilting going on. So that's not something you need to really, you know, lose sleep over. I'm going to go ahead and go into another swirl here. Pebble. Okay, I've got another skinny area. I'm gonna go ahead and do a skinny pebble in there. And another thing you might want to consider when you're quilting your pebbles, right now I'm using a stitch regulator and a stitch regulator keeps your stitches the exact same length. Um, so if you quilted a straight line that was an inch long and I had my stitch regulator set to 10, it would give me 10 perfectly spaced stitches along that inch. If I had it to 12, there'd be 12 stitches along the inch. Um, so on curves, really tight curves, like we're doing these small, small pebbles, you would want your stitches to be higher. Because if you had a, a really short stitch length, like say you had it set at seven for whatever reason, and you were doing these tight pebbles, your lines would look really jagged and not smooth. So usually when I'm doing small pebbles like this, I'll set my stitch re regulator like at 16 or 17, and it'll give you really smooth shaped curves and your stitches will look like a pencil line instead of a jagged uh, piece together line. Right now I've got it set at 14 just because this is a video and not a, a show quilt or something like that. Uh, just keep in mind that if you make a mistake or you need to seam rip whenever you've got 17 stitches per inch, it's a lot more difficult to rip out and a lot more time consuming. So maybe you could pick a happy medium like 14 or 15. Just something to think about. And you can also use an un unregulated stitch. And sometimes I actually find that that's easier with pebbles to do unregulated and just set the speed of my machine to one speed and go. So just find what you're comfortable with and do that. Play around with your machine settings a little bit. I'm gonna do some more pebbles here. Okay, and I'm intentionally leaving that space empty so that we can do some troubleshooting. So let's say you're quilting, 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 and all of a sudden you notice that you missed a spot. So let's say I'm over here, or way over here maybe even, and I notice I've got this big blank spot where I forgot to do any quilting. The great thing about this motif is you can backtrack along the un, un uh, backtracked areas to get back to where you need to go. So I'm gonna follow my pebbles on the lines that I haven't already backtracked on and I can even go up the swirl and I'm back where I need to be to fill that area in. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that.
Great, now I can go and do some more pebbles. Go into a swirl. Okay, now let's say for whatever reason, I don't wanna be here. I wanna be down here quilting. So I can go ahead and fill in some pebbles to get to that area. And now that I'm here, I could go ahead and echo this swirl so that I get to where I wanna be without having to do so many pebbles right here. So I'm gonna echo that swirl line and boom, I'm right where I need to be. So this is a really simple motif. The great thing about these swirls is they're a round motif. And generally, in my opinion, I think that round or circular motions while you're quilting are easier for beginners. So if you're just starting out, this is a great motif for you to master. And it's just swirls and pebbles. So you don't really need to spend a lot of time with the sketchbook. Although this is a fun one to doodle when you're on the road or you know if somebody else is driving or if you're in a waiting room somewhere and you don't have anything to do. So I hope you'll give this a shot. This is one of my favorites to do to add a lot of texture in a quick way and give a really cool look. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll give this a shot.